Hi guys, it's Marcus. Uh, this uh, YouTube is about beacons and um, how you can detect the presence of a user or you know the presence of a beacon. And um, the basic thing now is I wanted to get a notification, um, send a notification when I go for a one with a Fitbit or um, a beacon, and when I come back. And the first thing I did is. Uh, basically pick up all kinds of uh, Bluetooth devices in the house and uh, from, from the neighbors probably and um, and then I filtered them out towards uh, the devices I wanted to monitor. So the interesting part was uh, to discover like there's obviously different beacon types and what kind of information they broadcast. So most beacons are going to broadcast some sort of ID or UUID and they're going to broadcast some RSS uh, indicator, which is like a signal strength indicator. And um, if you have a proper eye beacon, um, they will broadcast more information like uh, accuracy, which is basically distance in meter, more ID information, major and minor, and uh, uh, proximity uh, strength. And sometimes they also do uh, a measured power. So you can use all these parameters with formulas to detect how far a beacon is, and then you can do something with this. So uh, here again, here's a Fitbit, uh, the Fitbit One. The broadcast name is One, and it shows uh, basically some, uh, basically gives me this RSS indicator. And the normal beacon here, um, the Rico beacon, it shows uh, um, more information basically. So I have those. Here's my Fitbit. And I have this Rico beacon here, which is a proper eye beacon. So we're going to play with those. So where is this being used? It's going to be used in, um, I see a lot of projects coming um, uh, up in regards to proximity, especially in retail. So what the retail store wants to know is which merchandise or which corner of the store is basically more used or more uh, frequently occupied versus others. So if you're a loyalty customer with a loyalty app and um, if the store has Bluetooth um, beacons or other beacons, there's different ways of monitoring this, um, then they can pick up uh, the flow of people in the store. So it's the same kind of concept, which I try to do here with my Raspberry Pi. So my, my basic idea is that I have the Raspberry Pi, which picks up in the first stage all the beacons and Bluetooth devices in the house, and then I try to filter them out. So here's the, the setup. So I have my uh, Raspberry Pi with a Bluetooth uh, dongle, and it picks up these beacons, which are like a Rico beacon, the Raspberry Pi, uh, the, the Fitbit, a tile, you know, which, you know, so I don't lose my keys. There's an Apple TV. Um, there's a, a TI beacon, and then there is, um, I have another, it's called uh, Blue Light Bean, which um, can also broadcast iBeacon uh, information. You can actually use also a computer which has um, Bluetooth low energy um, dongle or adapter or built in and do the same stuff. So basically, I collect all this information. I'm going to shoot this into IOTF using Bluemix and some Bluemix applications and Node-RED and, and then I dashboard this. And um, the idea is basically if the Bluetooth, in this case the Fitbit is close enough, I will send a message. So here are the pieces of software I use. So on the Raspberry Pi I have a Node.js and uh, a mashup of a couple of Bluetooth um, applications which are basically broadcast uh, the, the, the Bluetooth devices which detects uh, to via MQTT to IOTF. Then I have uh, Node-RED uh, for the orchestration. Um, obviously IOTF uh, captures all the device information and then I use Freeboard to, to dashboard this stuff. So if we look into so here's my Bluemix. So I have in Bluemix, I just used the boilerplate for Internet of Things, and it basically comes with the Internet of Things and a cloud and database. I 
added as a dependency freeboard so then it's just this url slash freeboard uh, for the for the dashboard uh, if we go to our device says you see here the couple devices registered on uh, internet of things and um, here is my raspberry pi terminal raspberry pi is right here it has these has a Wi-Fi adapter and a Bluetooth connector and uh, so let's see so if I start my little program here it should start broadcasting so it collects it basically broadcasts all the, the Bluetooth devices so if we go back here to my Internet of Things dashboard we see that uh, stuff is coming in So the next thing is, if we go to uh, Node Red, we see that the devices are coming in here as well. So here are my MQTT messages. So if we go to a dashboard, here we see all the devices. So as I said, I only have these Fitbit and uh, Rico devices. Uh, I'm going to switch on here my TI device, so it shows up. Then I have this Bluetooth, blue, blue, like bean device that should show up too. There it is. And you can actually also use your phone actually as a, as a beacon. So there's a phone app you can use uh, and then just as a beacon so that should my phone is showing up as well so let me switch those devices off just gonna focus on the Fitbit okay doc so if you look at the Fitbit there's this RSID RSSI uh, indicator which gives us an indication basic of the signal strength so you can use this so if I hold this hold my Fitbit close to my Raspberry Pi we should get a lower number it's not very exact but you know it kind of works so it, at least it put it detects the presence so and if I take the Fitbit and put it away then the number should get bigger so based on that, we can set a range and, uh, and use that range. So we go to see the presentation. OK, so basically, we have the Fitbit or a tile. And then the Raspberry Pi detects how close it is. And then if close enough, I use uh, Node-RED to send a notification. So if we go here, so I'd set this flow up. It's, uh, it's not as complicated as it looks. So basically here, if I put the feedback back to the, we see that message is coming in. So that's one. So the message is coming in. So basically I use this message now to just hook it up to the my notification tree so I plan I, I worked on notifying via um, uh, Google Cloud messaging email SMS via Twilio and uh, Twitter so now since the thing is closed we should get messages yeah you see here's uh, messages coming in from the beacon So if I move it away, then it should stop. No more messages, and if I clear this. So you can basically use this, and all it does is like it compares here this RSSI value, RSSI value, yeah. So basically in this formula, I just check this value if it's uh, higher or lower my, my uh, desired range, then I cannot send a notification. Okay, so 
that was another step. The other interesting discovery was that you can turn also your Raspberry Pi or notebook into a beacon. So uh, if I switch on my so any low energy USB um, stick or or in this case my MacBook. So this is my MacBook. So now my MacBook is uh, also collecting uh, Bluetooth device information, but it also broadcasts itself as a as a beacon. So here it is. It shows up on our dashboard. So the next scenario was I'm interested in was um, again here's the you know the phone or the Raspberry Pi. You can turn them all into a beacon itself. So the next scenario was um, roaming between gateways. So you can, what I wanted to try is to have a beacon, beacon roaming between my Raspberry Pi and the notebook. So I use the this uh, Rico beacon for this. So let's just set this up. So it's just a slight different program. So I have um, the monitoring program running on the on the Raspberry Pi and on the uh, notebook, the MacBook Pro. So if I put the beacon on uh, my Raspberry and I created a dashboard for this, so this is a Raspberry dashboard. So you see here the status. So one thing you're going to notice in in the next video is there's this terminology of entering a zone and then dwelling in the zone and then exiting the zone. So at the moment we missed the state of entering, so I'm dwelling in the zone on the Raspberry Pi. And if I move this guy farther away, give him a refresh, then it noticed that the, the, the beacon left the zone from the Raspberry. So the beacon basically is now in the middle here, and we're going to move him over to the notebook, and we should see a similar dashboard for the notebook. So this is the MacBook Pro. So if I refresh this, it should dwell, dwell on, yeah, so now it's dwelling on the, and it's in the zone of the, of the MacBook Pro, and it's not in the zone of the Raspberry Pi. And then again, if I move him over to the Raspberry Pi, the MacBook will notice that it's gone, and the Raspberry Pi will notice that it's there. So you can use this, this in the retail business, or you can use it for different scenarios, but this is used specifically in the retail business to monitor the people flow of people within the different zones of these people. Um, Okay, well, how do I, how I set this up with basically uh, the Raspberry Pi and uh, a USB Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, connector. I installed a couple of things on the Raspberry Pi. Um, we'll note that down exactly in the GitHub. Uh, we'll put the code in there as well. And uh, the PowerPoint I will put up uh, as, uh, as, uh, on, the, on the website. Um, just uh, drop me a tweet, uh, email, or... Uh, leave a comment, don't mind that, so, um, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks.